Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things. And today I want to talk about literary fiction and classics and plots and reading priorities and so on. This video may be quite rambly because I like half know what I want to say, but I don't completely know what I want to say. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. So when I started this YouTube channel two years ago, I said that my favourite genres, my favourite things to read were classics and literary fiction. Until I was sort of 19, I would have said classics and basically all I read was classics. And then I discovered contemporary literary fiction and began to really, really enjoy it. The year that I started my booktube channel, the year of 2014 to 15, the year that I did my creative writing masters at Bath Spa, I banned myself from classics. I did then read all of Jane Austen, but only because I was working in the Jane Austen Centre and I only ever read Jane Austen at work. But that year I banned myself from classics because I had read so many classics and because I felt that I wasn't aware enough of the contemporary literary scene. And I thought three years ago when I was leaving university that it would be useful for my writing and also useful for a future career in publishing to know more about what was being published now. So at the time when I started my booktube channel I was mostly reading literary fiction although I did also read some genre fiction. And then after I allowed myself to read classics again slowly over the last two years I have been reading more and more classics. In 2016 I would say that I was probably reading one or two classics a month out of like 10 or 12 12 books and then so far this year in 2017 and this is partly because I've been doing more rereading but I've been finding like every month that half of what I'm reading are classics and that I am enjoying classics much more than literary fiction at the moment and I had a kind of crisis recently about whether or not I actually like literary fiction and I do I do like so many of my favorite novels are literary fiction I do like literary fiction but I read The Tyler Zone a few months ago which everyone had massively adored and I didn't really like it that much I made a whole video on this I'll link that down below that's not what I'm here to talk about at the moment but the fact that I didn't like the title zone when everyone did gave me like a panic that maybe I didn't actually like literary fiction at all because a lot of the stuff I didn't like about it aside from the characterization and a few problems with the narrator was that it didn't have any story it just had a premise and the writing was too dense for me too poetic it's the kind of writing I enjoy in short stories but not actually in a novel and that gave me like a fright because I thought what if that's just what literary fiction is? What if I don't actually like literary fiction? This was emphasised because I read Ali Smith's The Accidental last month and I did really enjoy it but I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I enjoyed How To Both when I read it a few years ago and there were several things I didn't like about this and I didn't find like the central premise that believable but also and I didn't talk about this enough in my wrap-up I should have done I forgot but also I found the writing too dense I found it too overworked I found the writing for me interesting but like Marissa from Blakely Bookish, who I buddy read it with, said in her wrap-up, it was like Ali Smith had packed everything into this writing, which meant it was a slow read and also I feel like she was more focused on saying stuff nicely than on what she was trying to say. And I found this with quite a lot of books lately, more than I used to, and it's making me worry that I don't actually really like literary fiction. And this has got me thinking about two things. One, why I like classics more than literary fiction because I do I think that is fair to say and I think I have become aware of that over the last few months and in so many of the books I've been reading I enjoy Victorian literature more than modern literature as a general rule not always obviously but as a general rule if you give me a Victorian book I am more likely to love it than if you give me a modern book and I was thinking about why and it's also got me thinking about literary fiction as a term because the term literary fiction the genre of literary fiction if you can call it a genre is quite complicated and quite problematic and covers a lot of different things and in general I think it's because we use literary fiction in publishing and on booktube and in the literary world to refer to two different things. We use it on the one hand to refer to the kind of books that win the Booker Prize, to books that are focused on writing and language and literature as a literary and linguistic pursuit as much as about telling stories. We use it to talk about books that are focused often on writing and on theme more than on stories and on plot. But we also use literary fiction to refer to general fiction, to refer to fiction that doesn't fit into genre categories. If a book is not horror or sci-fi or fantasy or romance or historical fiction we end up calling it literary fiction and I think this is a problem. It does create confusion and complication because Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel is not the same genre as The Accidental by Ali Smith. And okay so maybe Station Eleven is apocalyptic fiction and we can call it a genre novel in a way and we can put it to the side but then The Lola Quartet by Emily St. John Mandel is not apocalyptic and it, like Station Eleven, is beautifully written, really focused on characterization and theme, but also it has a really dramatic, exciting, gripping plot. It is not the same genre as The Accidental by Ali Smith. Yet I would call both of these literary fiction. I don't have a term to distinguish them. Likewise, The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. I don't know what to call this apart from literary fiction, but it is not the same genre as 
the If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor. It is not the same genre as Ali Smith. It is not the same genre as The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. It is not the same genre as books by Julian Barnes, for example. And where do we draw the line between what is literary fiction and what is kind of the commercial end of literary fiction? Sometimes I hear people in publishing use the term book club fiction to refer to books that are accessible enough that a book group could read them and everyone could enjoy them, but also are complex and literary and thematic enough for a book club to discuss them. And actually what I have realised is that I like book club fiction a lot more than I like literary literary fiction. I like books with interesting themes and stories and characters and writing more than I like books that are focused on the writing. I like books that are focused more on the story than the telling. I have said on this channel at least twice, possibly three times before, that my priorities in terms of books is characterization, writing, world, plot. That is a lie. I had realised over the last few months that that is a lie. That's not true. That's not actually what I prize most in books. It's probably characterisation, themes, and then plot, writing and world kind of joint. But everything has to be there. And I love If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor a lot. This is a literary fiction novel if we class literary literary as being not book club fiction, but fiction that is literary and experimental in form. Fiction that doesn't use speech marks, choose a silly and arbitrary divider, but a lot of the literary literary fiction rather than the book club literary fiction does doesn't use speech marks and that's an easy way to draw a simple divide. I love If Nobody Speaks Remarkable Things a lot, but actually I love it more because of the characterisation than the writing. Yes, it is beautifully written, but actually what I love about this book is the characters, the themes, the message, the point and the story of it because it does have a story because this book has a story much more than The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss has a story. The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss has a premise and it's a very very good premise but for me it doesn't have much more than that premise and this does but not as much as other books which I love which are what I would call book club literary fiction. Stuff like The Lola Quartet by Emily St. Amanda or The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. Fiction that is both literary and commercial fiction that for me in these two books like they're beautifully written, they have really interesting themes and characterization, they have brilliant atmosphere but they also tell wonderful fascinating interesting gripping stories and I do want a story like I don't just read books for interesting pretty writing I think sometimes that's what I read short stories for and my judgment of short stories is very different but when I read a novel I also want a story that has to be good writing for me like I don't like books that are just entirely plot driven and have nothing else to them but there has to be a story for me there has to be a story that I can grip onto in some way and I think this is part of the reason why I enjoy reading classics more than I enjoy reading contemporary fiction because in general, in contemporary fiction now, the books that have the stories I want to read about don't have the writing I love, and the books that have the kind of writing I love don't have the kind of stories I want to read, or don't have enough of the story for me. And there are exceptions, writers like Emily St. John Mandel or Diane Setterfield who have it all, who have that balance of story and writing and characterization and themes and so many other things. But there are also a lot of authors out there, like Ali Smith, like Sarah Moss, even to a certain extent, I am sorry to say, and I'm sorry John McGregor because I love you. There are authors like these out there for me which have really interesting writing but don't have enough of a story. But classics, 19th century literature, Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, Elizabeth Gaskell, the Bronte sisters, Anthony Trollope, George Meredith, Thomas Hardy. These authors have interesting, intricate, complex, beautiful writing and they have good characters and they have interesting themes but they also have damn good stories and sometimes I want a really good story. And they have stories which move, they have stories which go places, they have stories where the stakes change massively over the course of a novel and I think this is something I really miss in contemporary fiction. And I think it's partly to do with the way that fiction is marketed at the moment. There is this idea sometimes that to sell a novel, for a novel to be sellable, you have to be able to give it a Twitter pitch, you have to be able to explain what this book is about in a tweet. And like, if I tried to explain Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens in a tweet, like, I couldn't because there is too much going on here and there is too much at stake and the stakes change so much over the course of the novel that I couldn't do it. On booktube when I do my monthly wrap ups I find that it's often much easier for me to describe what the plot of a modern book is in comparison to when I'm trying to describe the plot of a 19th century book because there are quite a lot of 19th century novels where in order to explain what it's about, in order to explain the complexities and the intricacies and what I love about a book I have to talk about stuff that happens like a third of the way through because the stake changed so much over the course of the novel. Like North and South for example, I consider this to be a book about a woman who moves from a rural southern place to a northern manufacturing city. It's not until chapter 7, page 90, that they get to the northern city. If this was being published nowadays, I bet the editor, I bet the publishers would make them cut the first six chapters because it's not going right into the story. Even when they made the TV adaptation of this a few years ago, they made them arrive at Milton, they made them arrive in the station 
station in the Northstone manufacturing town in the very first scene and then have a flashback to what happened before because they had to start at the point of the action because they had to start where it was about what it was about and something I miss in contemporary fiction I think is that kind of not exactly leisurely pace but the way that Victorian books don't feel the need to be about what they're about within the first chapter. They don't feel the need to set up the premise within the first few paragraphs. They take their time and the stakes change massively over the course of the book. And it means sometimes it's a great adventure to read a Victorian novel because you can't predict where it's going to go because the stakes could change massively over the course of the book. A few months ago I buddy read Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell with Kate Howe and we were having a discussion about how much the book changes over the course of it and how where the book is like halfway through you can never predict that it would end up there from the beginning and how much the stakes change over the course of this book and how fascinating the plot is. And although obviously that does happen in some books nowadays, I do find with a lot of the contemporary literary fiction I read that the premise is the story rather than the story being the premise. And I don't really know where I'm going with this, but the realisation of this gave me kind of like a crisis about literary fiction, partly in terms of my reading and partly to do with my writing, because in general if someone asks me what I write I say I write literary fiction, and then I've realised in the last year that actually that's not necessarily true. I write book club fiction, I write the commercial end of literary fiction, and more and more increasingly I write historical fiction. For the last year I've been working mostly on historical fiction and all of my new ideas are historical fiction and I'm becoming increasingly drawn to writing historical fiction more than writing literary fiction. And even then I think the literary fiction, the realist stuff set in the present day that I write does tend to be more commercial than on the literary side. I'm aiming to be more a Diane Setterfield than ever I am a John McGregor. But the fact that I've recently had this like crisis about literary fiction and classics and genre and plots and stuff has just made me like like doubt all of my reading and all of my writing and all of the stuff I say about what I like and yeah I don't know where I'm going with this I just wanted to chat about it because I think it's interesting and I've been trying to puzzle out why it is that I've been feeling less drawn to literary fiction in the last few months in my writing and my reading why I've been feeling increasingly drawn to Victorianness and what that means because I also feel sometimes in the bookish world and on booktube sometimes as well I think there is this constant need to conflate good fiction with literary fiction. Whereas you can have good well-written fiction that is not literary fiction, or that is not literary literary fiction, that is not Booker Prize literary fiction. You can have good well-written, beautifully written fiction that uses speech marks, like that is okay. So you can have beautifully written, well-written books that are not experimental in their writing and I think sometimes we have to remember that more. Often when people give advice to people starting booktube channels they tell them that they don't need to get caught up in the hype and that they need to remember to read the books they like and not feel they have to read the books that everyone else is talking about on booktube. And I often hear this advice given with regards to YA because obviously there is a very big YA community on booktube but actually I think I kind of found when I started booktube that I got caught up in a way in the literary booktube community, in the booktube literary fiction community and really really wanting to read a lot of literary fiction. In the first year I was on booktube I read a lot of the magic realism which actually I don't really like that much and I also read a lot of more experimental literary fiction which isn't necessarily as much my thing as I think I was trying to make it just because that was what everyone else was talking about. And I think what I'm trying to say here in a long really roundabout way is that it's okay for me not to love all literary fiction and it's okay for me to sometimes find experimental writing too much for me and it's okay for me to sometimes want a book to have speech marks and it's okay for me to want a book to have a good story and that's all all right and it's all okay and I have to realise that that's okay and it's okay for me to write commercial or historical fiction rather than literary fiction if that's what I want to write and it's okay and it's all okay and that maybe we need to rethink the way we define literary fiction and that's basically what I wanted to say. I'm sorry this was such a ramble but hey there we go. Thank you very very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this stuff and all of the junk that I've said down in the comments below and we can we can have a chat about literary fiction and classics and plots and stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back soon with a video that will hopefully be less rambly.